for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, let's become prepared for God to bless us. He will bless us much more than he has already blessed us throughout this entire year. In this brand new life, we are going to live with our Lord God. Because when we are connected to the Word of God, you can be certain that we are given the spiritual nourishment that we need. All we, all we need is to pay close attention to that which He guides us through the Holy Word because sometimes the Lord guides us, but we don't follow Him. Many times we just open the Bible and read it, but we don't meditate on it. We don't look at the Word in a way as if we didn't know anything, but the truth is that we don't know. The Bible says, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. They think they have, but they don't, because they don't stop to receive the revelation from God. And if God gives you a revelation, you don't know the great potential that you have. Sometimes a person without God gets a very high score. Oh, this is so good. I didn't even need him. That is so foolish. With the Lord, this person could have received 30 times 10, 40 times 10, or a hundred times ten. The reward is three thousand percent, six thousand percent, and ten thousand percent. Please don't be like that lawyer, okay? He had to go to court for a court hearing at two in the afternoon, and if he didn't go, it was a labor hearing, and if he wasn't present, then his boss would lose the case, and it was worth a lot of money. It was a very important case, and his boss was right, and he was wrong, and he only had five more minutes to get there, but there was no place to park. If he parked far, then he would arrive late. And if the judge called him, he was going to miss the call. And this lawyer didn't believe in God, but he said, God, I don't believe in you, but if you exist, open me a place to park. He closed his eyes, and when he opened them, there was a lady in front from the court coming out with her car. He said, God, forget what I just told you. <laughs> That's so foolish. <laughs> On that, on that day, everything could have started to go well for him, but he didn't care about that. Don't do that. God has a great many things to do in your life. You don't know what it is to receive 30 times more, but that's not enough, 60 times. You could even reach 100 times more because it's a promise that Jesus gave, so believe in that which he told us. But we have to pay close attention because God does not speak by chance. When God speaks, he has a purpose. In all of the works that he carries out, from a simple prayer that comes after you have a simple thought, for instance, to park the car. Oh, let me tell you something, folks. This past week, I was remembering a few things with my sons. When I went back to college to finish my degree, every single day, I used to have a small car, it was like a beetle, and I would arrive and always parked in front of the campus and my children never could. I told them it's because God gives me the spot because I pray. Then one day I drove a big pickup truck. It was the church's, but I used to drive it. It was very big, folks. It didn't fit in that small parking space. And we were late and I gave a ride to two of my sons who also studied there. And my son David provoked me. Today I wanted to see. Oh no, I was the one who provoked him. I said, oh, I forgot to pray at home for God to give me a parking space. So David said, I think you won't find one. I said, God is good. Do you want to see? Hey, Jesus, can you please find me a parking space? I told him, you'll see. And as I arrived, it seemed there weren't any. So I pulled over a little bit and the car keeper was like this. <laughs> I said, look, David, it's a messenger from God. <laughs> David replied, I can't believe it. You're right again. I told him those who walk with God are always blessed, my son. It can't be any different. My brethren, God always leads us in triumph, even in the smallest things. But sometimes we simply don't understand what God is doing for us. A miracle speaks loudly to our hearts. When miracles come, we are to have peace and happiness as well and get rid of all suffering and also as a master. If you are able to notice how God has blessed you, the way he has done the miracle in the life of any person, whoever they may be, in that which is written in the Bible, you will certainly enjoy a great lesson. So don't read about the miracle just to know about it, but also to become blessed. Now let's go to the Gospel of Mark and study a very blessed word. My dear folks, in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse number 17, the Lord Jesus had told them, uh, he had told them the following. It starts with verse 15. Then he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Herod. And they reasoned among themselves saying, it is because we have no bread. But Jesus being aware of it said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? So Jesus was teaching them another lesson. They had spoken that nonsense. When is it that we talk nonsense, Dr. Suarez? 
when we don't examine the Word of God and don't have the revelation from God. And with our sense of judgment, we speak whatever we want to say. But is it really that what God wanted us to know? When Jesus told them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, Although they did not understand, they should have prayed. Tell us how we must proceed, O Lord. So then Jesus told them, Do you not yet perceive nor understand? They had to perceive in order to understand. If you don't perceive what God speaks to you, then that will go by in your life, and you will not understand. If you don't understand, you will not have the understanding. And it is this lack of understanding that is the reason why we are destroyed. This is written in the Holy Bible, brethren. And Jesus finished by saying, Is your heart still hardened? Mark 8, 17. My brothers, it's a secret. It's a message for you and for me. Ask the Lord God for your heart never to become hardened because of all the disappointments and the crisis that you will go through in your life and other people's behavior as well. Brethren, you must desire for your heart to always be a heart of flesh because when we have the enlightenment from the Bible, he will replace our heart of stone for a heart of flesh, which is sensible to his touch always. So you must have this heart of flesh and never be hardened, become full of stones so you can perceive and when you understand, you will certainly be able to enjoy, take great advantage, and praise the Lord for all that he does for you. With Jesus, our life is always happy. It simply cannot be any different. Sometimes we can become a little bit impatient. We become somewhat upset because things are simply not going well in our life or are not happening as we'd like them to happen. But if we look in the Holy Scriptures in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, let's go to this passage, we are going to see that God is not going to do exactly what we want Him to do in our life, but He's going to do what's best for our life. And He knows what's best, and He takes us through this way. The Holy Bible guarantees that the wrath of man does not operate God's justice. So don't become restless and angry. No, it's now because this is how it has to be. You will certainly lose that way. God has a purpose in everything that happens in our life. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, I mean chapter three, verse number one, it says the following. To everything there is a season. Put this in your heart. This is how it is. Let's say that God wants the faith show to be seen throughout the world in all the nations, even in those that are against the gospel, and their frontiers are shut to God and to those people who try to come in with the Bible, for they can all go to jail or die. One day it might happen, but the Lord God knows the right time which he has determined so that this blessing can take place all over the entire world. So it's not us, but let's say that now I want a church so I can preach for 100,000 people every month or 500,000 people so I will buy a great plot of land and do a great construction. My dear brothers, if God wants that, we don't even have to plan it. We only have to let the Lord reveal it. One day a preacher, he was an American, he asked me, Suarez, tell me what your plans are for the next five years. I just looked at him, what plans? I don't have any plans. You don't have any plans? I said, no. I just want to know what God has planned for me. I already have enough things to worry about every day, but I know that God will take care of my tomorrow. This is true, folks. No, but we, all right, but shouldn't we have a plan? But I don't have a plan. We are working to build our great temple. But if he speaks to my heart, just like he spoke to David, you are not going to build it. I will applaud him. Oh, don't do that, Lord, I want to build it. That's nonsense, I'm just a servant. So we all must be in the hands of God exactly this way. I don't mean with our arms crossed, much to the contrary. But we have to be alert and aware in order to know what it is that the Lord wants us to do with our lives. So this is what he said here. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. There is time. That which he wants me to do I don't have to become desperate about it. No, I have to get that person who is harming me out of the way and that one too. My brother, there's a time. If it is for me to do it, then the right time will come and I will carry out that which I have to do. Don't become anxious. Don't waste an opportunity. 
The young lady says, if, jo if Johnny doesn't propose to marry me this year, and if we don't get married by the end of the year, then I'm going to break up with him. Johnny, you can be certain you'll find a new bride because she is going to stone you. Maybe Johnny is the ideal man for her life, but perhaps he's simply not ready yet. Oh, but he's a grown man already with a degree, but he's not mature enough. No, but he's not mature. My dear sister, we have to see what it is that God will do. Do you want to see a beautiful thing? It is written in the Holy Scriptures in the book of Exodus, chapter number 13. Let's take a close look. It wasn't by chance that the Holy Bible, it, it was written for us to, to understand the will of the Lord God. This is what it says. Exodus 13, 17. Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. It was much nearer. Someone said that if you walk normally, it only takes 11 days for you to do this journey from Egypt to Canaan. They took more than 40 years. It would last that long. But Dr. Suarez, there were old people, there were children and animals. Someone has said that two months was more than enough time for them to reach that land. But God didn't take them that way, which was much closer. And what did God do? For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. My brethren, they couldn't go the way which was much shorter because otherwise there would have been war. That land was completely dominated by nations who had been there for centuries. I don't know how many millenniums, but certainly centuries. Those people were deeply rooted there. And why did God take that land away from them? Because they didn't want to know about God. They practiced all types of sorcery and witchcraft. They were so wicked. The more the person stays with the demon, the more the demon possessed they will become. They reached a certain point. They had a god that was made of bronze, just a shell, hollow inside. And the people would light a fire. And when it was incandescent, Malik was the name of that filthy and evil demon then. People would get small children and throw them inside, thinking that that would bring them prosperity. It, it's amazing. It, it's amazing what takes place in darkness. That's why you must never leave the light. Those who walk in the light during the day don't stumble, but those who walk in darkness do. And if the people arrived in that land, there would be a serious war and it would be a real bloodbath. War was for men who were real warriors. But if a man is weak or if they're unwavering, then they can't go to war. A war is only for those who are ready to fight to win to the end. And if those battles were to take place, they would not have been ready. Maybe dear Johnny is not ready to be in charge of a household. So then little Mary decides that Johnny is not going to be her husband. She will find a new man and she does. And at the end of her life, she will say, I was so stupid. God had loved me. God had prepared the best for me, but I didn't allow God to do his work. I wanted to. Don't take a step all by yourself without the Lord God going ahead of you and opening all the doors for you. But Dr. Suarez, a person can go and become successful. I don't know what their definition of success is. Success is when you do God's will in all aspects of your life. It can't be any different, my brethren. Over in the book of Proverbs, there is a message for us, which is very important. What does the book of Proverbs say, Dr. Suarez? It's chapter 10, verse number 22. Let's read together. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. My dear brethren, allow the Lord God guide you. Don't pull a trick on anybody. Don't lie, don't deceive, and if you do, confess it, because God adds no sorrow with it, but without him there is. Listen, life has already shown us all people who have been wicked to other people. They were doing what they shouldn't have done, and the price that they have paid and are paying is very high. Dr. Suarez, it's hard to do the work of God. No. You don't lose a 
You don't lose a minute of your sleep and no strands of hair will fall out because of that. You have no pain at all. But that's when you are in the blessing. Perhaps you would have this blessing multiplied by 30 or 60 or 100 if you had only understood that with God there is a time for every purpose. There is. And if you had allowed the Lord God to work, but sought the Lord, sought Him with all of your heart, you can't just cross your arms and expect that He will simply do everything. You've got to be kidding, right? You have to do your share. You simply would have 30, 60, 100 times more than you received and with no pain whatsoever. But there was pain here. If there was pain in your life and problems, can you imagine the other side? Because you allowed yourself to be touched by the enemy. There is no such thing as a curse without a cause. That's the truth. And on the other side, my dear brethren, we will all be judged by what we have done. If they are the works of the flesh, of wood, straw, or hay, they will surely burn. But if they are the works of the Spirit, precious stones, or maybe strong and, and firm materials that are resistant, they will all become purified. Amen, dear brethren. Let's do the following. I'm going to call everyone up here in front, all those people who have a back problem. Let's ask Jesus to heal all the back problems now. Dr. Suarez, I have a herniated disc, so come up front. I have a, I have a bone spur, Dr. Suarez, come up here too. My vertebrae is injured, I have scoliosis, lordosis, kyphosis. Whatever evil is afflicting you, please come here because God will give you a blessing. All back problems from the top all the way to the bottom. And sometimes it affects your leg or your knee or your ankle or your hips. And it affects your shoulder, your arm and your forearm, the wrist and the hand. It affects your head and also your heart. Okay now, dear brothers, look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me, look at me. God's things are easy. There's nothing complicated about them. Perhaps you suffered an accident 30 or 50 years ago, five years last month, I don't know. And the doctor said your back will never be well again. Humanly speaking, he's right, but not spiritually. Let the people come because there will be many up here in front. Stop wherever you are now, even in the aisle. You can be sure that God is with all of you. Have faith. Please look at me now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, everything you ask in my name, I will do, my brethren. I'm going to ask him to heal your back, and he will go by and put your vertebra back in its place. He will restore the disc that ruptured and formed a hernia. Your nerve is being pressured. That's why you feel pain in your sciatic nerve. You feel pain in your knee and in your sciatic nerve. Pain in your ankle as well. You feel pain in your shoulder, and therefore you can't lift your arms. You can't put your arms backwards. God will go by you now. When we finish the prayer, I'm telling you that your action, your movements will say, if you believed or not, I will say, do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't squat, now you will be able to. If you couldn't bend down, now you will. If you couldn't lift up your arms, now you will. If you couldn't twist around, now you will. Shall we pray now? Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Have faith, my brethren. God, I come into your presence now. There is a time for every purpose, but the time for these people to be sick has finished. It's now time for them to be healed. And I ask you, God, come down with all of your power, Father, and come and touch the lives of all of these people. My God, from the top of their backs all the way to the bottom, on the vertebrae, the discs, undo all now that is afflicting them. I am asking you for a complete and thorough restoration. Father, heal them at this moment. I am going to use the power that you have given me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I paralyze all the action of the enemy in the life of this person. And I speak to the demon which was sent to destroy their lives that has entered into the spine and caused the hernia and caused the vertebrae to be dislocated. Perhaps this person was born with this ailment. Whatever the affliction is, I am commanding. You are going to leave right now. This is an order and take away all side effects as well. Leave now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you say, Amen. I believe in you, Lord. If you believe, raise both your hands and say thanks to the Lord. Now bend down four times. Do it quickly. This is so beautiful, folks. This is beautiful to see. Do it four times. Perhaps it hurt the first time, but if you persevere and have faith, you will receive your blessing. 
Dr. Suarez, the pain is gone. Who can say their ailment has left their bodies? Lift up your hand, those who have been healed. Wave your hand if you've been healed. Is the ailment gone? Lower your hands now. Wait two minutes, folks, because the Lord God is doing his work. My pain was intense, Dr. Suarez, but Jesus touched me and healed me now. Who else had a very serious ailment but has just been healed by Jesus? Raise your hand. This brother over here. Tell me, what happened to you, my friend? It's been more than 10 years. More than 10 I years? I have been suffering with my back, a problem in the esophagus and my bladder and my stomach. Was your back just healed now? Yes, glory to God. What couldn't you do before? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing, brother. I couldn't do anything. I saw you coming from that side and noticed you were not well. I have to be sincere. I am certain God has healed me today. He healed you. So can you bend down in and move now? In the name of now? Jesus. Bend down in the name of Jesus. You couldn't do that before? I couldn't do this and this either. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus is beautiful. Stay connected to the Lord, brothers. What happened to you, sister? Pain in the back and in the legs. Was it very, very serious? Very, very serious. Is the pain gone now, it's sister? All gone. What was the matter with this sister here? What happened? I had a lot of pain in my back, and last night I couldn't even squat, and my legs were hurting as well. I even felt kind of nauseous because of the intense pain I was feeling. It's all gone now? Yes, it is. Just one more testimony on this side. Two more. Don't get anybody else. Get this lady and that other one. Dr. Suarez, I was feeling so much pain in my knee. I was even worried thinking that it could be water in my knee. And for a long time, I couldn't even bend down and touch my knees. But now I can go all the way down to my feet. So do it now, sister. <laughs> this is beautiful. You couldn't even touch your no, knees? No, I couldn't go down to my Why knee. Why were you so afraid that it could be water in your knee? Just out of curiosity. Because it was hurting so much. Did you think that there was water in your knee that it could have been more serious? It simply hurt a lot. <laughs> the fact really you hurt. thought it could have been water afraid. in your knee caught my attention. And what happened to you? Well, Pastor, yesterday I was coming to the vigil, you know, uh -huh. on the 31st. But I couldn't make it here because I had a terrible pain in my back. what about now, sister? And when I woke up this morning, I said, my God, I'm going to church today. And I couldn't get up from my bed. And were you healed now? Now I was healed. Now I can bend three Do it times. Again, sister. <laughs> Let's applaud the Lord Jesus. You can all go back to your seats now. Roll the real life drama in the name of the Lord. I used to work in the fields, you know, and one day I injured my leg and I began to treat it. I have been going to the doctor for 20 years and the doctor says I have wear and tear. There is no more cartilage in this part of the bone than I had arthrosis. It was a lot of pain. There were days I couldn't sleep. It hurt nonstop. She complained every single day. Oh, Maria, today I'm so bad. I can't do anything. So we're always coming to help her, right? Sometimes she could move, but then she couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk. I would get up, but had to lean on the walls because I had no strength in my leg. She likes to clean the garden and brush the backyard, but sometimes couldn't because of the pain. There were days I would get so nervous, very nervous, because of the pain I felt and I cried a lot. She cried and complained, and I would say, sister, work on your faith. Have more faith because God will heal you. I asked Jesus many times to heal me from this infirmity because no doctor was able to help me. She always seeks the Lord. She goes to church and watches services on when TV. When I watched Dr. Swatis, I saw many people giving testimonies. I said, oh my God, so many people giving their testimonies. Could it be that one day I will also give my testimony and thank the Lord for healing me from this infirmity that was upon and me? And the Lord answers Sister Maria Aparecida. On the morning of October 18th, 2014, she takes part in the service Dr. Suarez ministered in the city of Navidai. She told me that he was coming and she would be healed on that very day. I said, I will go to Dr. Suarez's service and I know I will be delivered from this infirmity. When I got there, it was hurting so much I couldn't remain standing. I stood next to the stage. Then he came down, grabbed my hand, and I went up to the stage with him. He then prayed and said, Jesus is going to heal you. And just look at what happened. How were you walking before, sister? Like this. Like, like this. Like that? How about now? Now I can walk normally. So walk normally now. 
Look at that, folks. Have you been touched, sister? Yes, I am. Did Jesus heal you? Thanks to God. Are you going to walk with a limp again? No, it's been 20 years. 20 with years? With my knee like this. A problem in your knee. So let's yes, walk doctor. a victory lap together. Yes. Come on, let's walk with me. Walk the victory lap together with me, Maria. Chant with me. And Maria walked her victory lap just now. Come here, Maria. Come here, sister. Maria. Sister Maria, your day has arrived. Thanks be to God. Show us how you used to walk before the prayer. Show us. Like that? Like this, dragging, dragging leg. my leg. So go ahead, walk normally, Maria. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> God heard your prayers. Yes. Today is the day. At that moment, I didn't feel pain, so I said, Jesus has healed me because I didn't feel the pain in my knee again. When I came down, I was already feeling better. When I got home, I didn't feel any more pain. Today, Maria Aparecida takes care of the house with a lot of enthusiasm. She washes the dishes, she brushes the backyard, and feels no more pain. When I get here, the dishes are washed, the backyard is clean. She doesn't complain anymore, and she never again felt any pain. It was a true miracle of God. I thank the Lord for this great blessing. Only he can do such a miracle in our lives. Only Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you so much. Those of us who have some knowledge of the Bible, we notice when the faith of some people is just in the initial phase. She said, I felt God healed me because the pain was gone. No, God heals us when we believe in the word. That is the symptom which is going away. But the person is so locked into the things of this world and so many religious teachings that they don't even notice it. What do you and I have to do? We need to get a teaching from God. It is a very tiny difference that will make a big difference in the end. It's when you discover and hold on to the word and God fulfills his word. My brethren, there is a time for every purpose. And now our time, ever since Jesus has died, is a time to overcome, to win and overcome. Let me bless those who are watching us and bless you as well. Let us pray now. God, please touch this heart. Their heart is starting to beat very rapidly right now. Please calm this person. Touch the life of this person. I'm going to use your power for your glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I paralyze all evil action in your life, and I command evil, go away now in the name of Jesus, and never come back again. And you all say amen.